Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the two debtors. People love to listen to Jesus teach. They love not only the miracles that he performed, they love the stories that he told. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes within their heart. Parables are earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Last week, we explored the parable of the two builders. Jesus called one wise and the other foolish. The wise builder built his house on rock, while the foolish builder built his house on sand. Jesus said the difference between the two builders who both listened to Jesus teach was that one applied what Jesus said to his life while the other did not. Jesus said, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Matthew chapter 7, verse 26. And when the storms of life come to the wise and to unwise people, those who've built their life on the rock stand tall. They're able to praise God no matter what happens. They're able to trust God no matter what happens. They know how to forgive. They know how to love one's enemies. They know how to endure hardship. They know how to release the power of God. They know how to heal the sick and cast out demons. Matthew says, when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 28. Today we'll hear the parable of the two debtors. The parable of the two debtors is found only in Luke's gospel. Jesus told this parable while having dinner at Simon the Pharisee's home, where he was an invited guest. This story should not be confused with a similar event that took place in Bethany, recorded in Matthew, Mark, and John. In Bethany, Jesus did not tell the parable of the two debtors. So Luke says, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and Jesus went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. Luke chapter 7, verse 36. This is the first of three invitations that Jesus accepted to have dinner with the Pharisee. It is possible that Jesus came to Simon's house without his disciples. And this could be one of the reasons that neither Matthew, Mark, nor John wrote about this incident as they were not eyewitnesses to this amazing evening. It's not unusual for neighbors to stop by for a special dinner in those days. They were not welcome at the table, but they were welcome to observe the celebration from a distance in the courtyard. And so it appears that Jesus came alone to this evening meal. In the shadow of the night, another person came alone as well. While she is unnamed, she was nevertheless notorious, that is, well known. Shockingly, she broke the custom of the day by not stopping in the courtyard, but actually entered into the very room where the meal was going on. And we've got to see what's about to happen. Let's be a fly on the wall, taking in all that is going on, listening to every word about to be spoken, Let's watch the expression on the faces of all of the participants as this lady walks in. Luke says, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that Jesus was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment. And standing behind Jesus at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. Luke chapter 7, verse 37 and 38. Simon was horrified 
because his dignified party had been taken captive by an unexpected guest. A twist came that he didn't see coming. By the Spirit of God, Luke reveals that this is what went through Simon's mind. Simon thought, if Jesus were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who was touching him, for she was a sinner. Luke chapter 7, verse 39. Of course, Jesus knew exactly who the woman was. And of course, he knew exactly what Simon was thinking. Jesus also knows how to change the heart of this lady. He knew that change was coming to her. Jesus is not like the other religious leaders of the world who can't be touched by unholy people. When unholy people touch Jesus, the holiness of Jesus washes away the unholiness in the person who touches him. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Jesus wanted to help not only the woman, he wanted to help Simon as well. This was exactly the right time for Jesus to tell one of his famous parables. Jesus broke the tension in the room with the following story. Simon, I have something to say to you. And Simon answered, say it, teacher. Luke chapter 7 and verse 40. The Pharisees were accustomed to receiving the praises of men. Perhaps Simon thought that Jesus was going to pay him a compliment. He certainly hoped he would. Simon's relief didn't last very long. He quickly discovered that as Jesus spoke, he was one of the characters in the story. Jesus said, a certain moneylender had two debtors. One owed him 500 denera and the other 50. And when they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both of them. Luke chapter 7, verse 41. Now, according to the standard wage of the day, the lesser debtor owed 50 days of his daily income, while the larger debtor owed almost a year and a half of his daily earnings. Now, neither the lesser nor the greater debtor could afford to pay the creditor. Now, Jesus is ready to ask Simon the most important question he had ever been asked. Jesus asked Simon, which of these two will love him more? Luke chapter 4, 7 and verse 42. Reluctantly, Simon said, the one I suppose for whom he canceled the larger debt. Luke chapter 7, verse 43. Jesus replied, you have judged correctly or you have given the right answer. Simon's heart Actions were exposed because when Jesus had arrived at his home, he did not give Jesus a welcome kiss or water to wash his feet or oil for his head or face. But the lady, when she came in, wet Jesus' feet with her tears, washed his feet with her hair, kissed his feet and anointed them with oil. And Jesus turned to the woman while still gazing at her, said, Simon, do you see this lady? Luke chapter 7, verse 44. Jesus is about to help Simon see his lack of love by looking at the outpouring of love that had just happened before his eyes. In the parable, Jesus is the lender who forgives the debt of both of the men. In this story, We don't know who the greater sinner is, but we do know who the greater lover was. Jesus is more interested in our love than in our sin. On the cross, as he died for you and me, big sins and little sins were just as painful for him to bear. Jesus turned back to Simon and he says the following, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who loves little, forgiven little, loves little. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. And Jesus turned back to the woman and said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Luke chapter 7, 
verse 48. As we come to the close of this story, we learn that although Jesus came alone to the dinner with Simon, many others had also been invited, Luke tells us. Then those who were at the table with him began to say amongst themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Luke chapter 7, verse 49. That's a great question. People want to know, how can Jesus forgive sin? This means that the parable that Jesus told was not just for Simon, but for everyone who came to the dinner party that night. And since you and I have been like flies on the wall watching all of these events taking place, this story is for us as well. Jesus offered to forgive all of our sin, and the size of our sin does not matter to him. What matters to him is that we see in Jesus what the woman saw in him. He wants us to see that he is willing to forgive us for all of our sins. He wants us to love him like he loved the lady. As the dinner party ended, Jesus turned to the woman and said to her, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Luke chapter 7, verse 50. By placing faith in what Jesus did for us on the cross, we too can be saved by faith and go in peace. The lady had all of her sins forgiven, and all of her emotional pain was washed away boldly by touching Jesus. Jesus wants to take your sin and your emotional pain away. No matter what has happened to you, Jesus can wash it all away. Say with me, thank you, Jesus, for coming to earth to die for me in my place. Wash all my pain away and forgive all of my sin. You just turn to Jesus, write to me, and tell me what God has just done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.